Hello, this is a course on British literature from Renaissance to the present day at Tallinn University and I'm your instructor, Dr. Julia Kuznetsky. This lecture introduces Thomas Stern's Eliot. Um, T.S. Eliot was, can be called probably the most influential poet of the 20th century and it is interesting to place him within the context of British literature because he was actually born in the United States in St. Louis, Missouri and educated at Harvard, then continuing his education at Sorbonne and Oxford, moving uh, thus to Europe. So he was American by birth, but uh, he received British citizenship and also joined the Church of England in 1927. What he said about his own identity uh, is this, my mind may be American, but my heart is British. So uh, he settled in London and having tried uh, his hand in the banking career, working for Lloyds Bank, he started writing experimental poetry. And he was promoted by Ezra Pound, an imagist poet, who greatly admired Eliot's uh, art and especially Eliot's ability to naturally modernize himself, as Pound put it. Um, so, for his pioneering work in modern poetry, Eliot was an, awarded the Nobel Prize in 1948. Despite this great recognition, we can see some contradictions in Eliot's writing, as we shall see uh, later. Uh, Eliot had, had his own views on culture and civilization. According to him, civilization had reached its height in the Middle Ages, and since the 19th century, which he did not admire at all, uh, there had been progressive degradation in his view. He was one of those early 20th century thinkers who held a non-linear view of history, viewing history as a cycle of, uh, of birth, life, death and rebirth. So uh, viewing history essentially as a kind of series of cultures represented by organisms and as any organism it had its span of life and uh, aging was as an inevitable process. So uh, after aging and, and death comes rebirth and currently that is in the 1920s he believed that the culture had uh, aged but not yet died so was in a kind of agonizing situation and that sense of agony we can see in his resorting to the allusion to Sibyl of Cuma uh, which is a quotation from Satyricon by Petronius that we find at the beginning of Wasteland and uh, this quotation is given in Latin and Greek. Uh, Eliot was in general famous for resorting to all kinds of foreign languages and to massive allusions. So uh, this story tells of uh, Sibyl who had asked gods for eternal life but forgot to ask for eternal youth. So it was gradually aging and feeling very uh, uncomfortable and it uh, shrunk in size and was kept in a jar and was feeling totally powerless. So actually was asking for death. That was her greatest wish, as we can see in the English translation. So starting with the death wish we can see this idea that uh, there is a sense of sp spiritual decay of modern world and uh, Eliot um, was uh, very interested in this topic. So his views on society and civilization uh, also deserve attention. He criticized democracy and mass culture and that was one of the reasons why he decided to settle in Britain and leave the United States because he was not a fan of democracy. He uh, thought that it gave a cluttered picture of contemporary society uh, which was lacking in order, homogeneity and authority. So Eliot was one of those people who believed in authority, uh, in, in conservatism. He, uh, he joined uh, the Anglican Church and also um, proclaimed himself a royalist in, polit in politics and an Anglo-Catholic in religion, so was very, very con conservative in this sense. Um, and uh, that accounts for some of the contradictions uh, of his views. His ideal was a society clearly divided into classes, homogeneous in race and language, uh, 
that he saw as a, a prerequisite for order and stability. But certainly, with a contemporary eye, we can see lots of problems in such an outlook because it resulted in racism, xenophobia, and also anti-Semitism, which uh, was uh, largely silenced up to uh, right up to the 1990s. Uh, Elias anti-Semitic views were silenced, but he was known for um, quite nasty remarks on um, on uh, or against uh, the Jewish people uh, in the lecture in uh, uh, in Virginia, he uh, claimed that uh, it was important to have cultural homogeneity, but what was more important is homogeneity of religious background. So we can see uh, how um, actually um, how greatly we, we can criticize uh, Eliot for, for his political views. Um, that was also characteristic of the 1930s. Uh, and also uh, we can see that his private life was, was similarly controversial. Uh, his marriage to Vivian Haywood was not happy. Uh, and uh, he um, he himself remarked on that that their relationship was um, facilitated by factors other than love and uh, mutual understanding and, and harmony. I came to persuade myself that I was in love with Vivienne simply because I wanted to burn my boats and commit myself to staying in England. So this um, keyword persuade so both of them were persuading themselves of something so this idea of something false something artificial lying at the bottom of a relationship we can see in his writings especially in the wasteland and as he himself admits to her the marriage brought no happiness to me it brought the state of mind out of which came the wasteland so vivian uh, can be seen as a phantom-like figure on the fringe of his life. Um, she was, despite being his muse, written out of his biography and literary history. And in uh, later she was committed to a mental institution, although she showed no symptoms of madness. And it was Elliot himself who, who was who had the experience of undergoing psychiatric treatment, but it was Vivienne who was committed to an institution and that was also supported by her family and there she died in 1947. And uh, Elliot then continued with his second marriage. So she was not only the muse, but also material for his many poems, including The Wasteland. Uh, and she believed in him uh, as a future great poet, uh, as we've seen in his confession but she was ostracized also by Eliot's so-called friends most notably Virginia Woolf who in general was very jealous of any female contemporaries of talent so she she referred to her as this bag of ferrets that means a mad one uncontrollable one this bag of ferrets uh, is what Tom wears around his neck so kind of burden for him uh, and the sense of guilt about their relationship with Vivienne we can find in his um, play The Family Reunion where she is um, referred to as a restless shivering painted shadow. Uh, T.S. Eliot's poetry uh, then reflects all that complexity and contradiction and um, and um, uh, controversial um, corpus of his views on many areas of life, uh, society, politics and art. He had no respect for the 19th century as we have seen. His standard was the 17th century metaphysical poets, most notably John Donne, from whom he took up the idea of uh, the literary device of conceit uh, that uh, can be found in the flea. Um, so uh, according to Eliot, dance poetry was more subtle, suggestive and precise than that of later age, uh, ages. And um, 
he uh, took up the idea of conceit and then added to that some modernist innovation um, reproducing sharp contradictions and also fast tempo of modern life resulting in the invention of his own literary device of objective correlative so an objective correlative um, is, a is uh, Eliot's original method uh, of taking a set of objects or a situation or a chain of events employed to render a particular emotion. Uh, but usually this, uh, those objects or situations uh, take up something very well recognizable, very down to earth, very mundane and even banal. So uh, here we see really the influence of uh, Dan's conceits. For example, in the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock, he refers to the futility of existence as this, uh, when the main character says, I have measured out my life in coffee spoons. So certainly we can recognize uh, what coffee is, we can understand, we know what a spoon is, what a coffee spoon is, and we can understand how it refers to the futility of existence, because measuring out something every day and some, something really small as a spoon, uh, that is really uh, a very effective metaphor. And uh, this is a very good example of Eliot's objective correlative. And then in the love song, there is a reference to chivalric ballads, maybe. Alfred also refers to uh, kings, uh, chivalry, but proof rock, this is something very primitive, very banal, and he's also rock proof that he is devoid of ability to have any emotions so already in the title we can see uh, a whole um, a lot of uh, all kinds of references and suggestions. Uh, and, and he spent his life on futile activities. Uh, and those images are, are really unpoetic. Um, this we can also find these ideas uh, in T.S. Eliot's Preludes, uh, which are short uh, pieces, poetic pieces that he wrote uh, at the early stage of his career, taking up the example of short pieces for the piano written by Chopin in alternating C minor and C major. So for Eliot, he takes crisp urban images uh, of the big city of London, where uh, that is contrasted to the soul of the poet, uh, which is referred to as something infinitely gentle, infinitely suffering thing. So that's the soul of the poet, who is stifled by all the ugliness of the environment. The poet, in Eliot's view, is somebody above the crowd. The crowd is very profane, very primitive, vulgar, uh, and uh, and stupid, and then then when he, he clearly um, uh, separates himself from the street and the mass, you had such a vision of the street as the street hardly understands. So the poet, this intelligent, clever and suffering soul is above the vulgar crowd. And those views are expressed in Eliot's tradition and the individual talent, his work of literary criticism, because besides poet, he was also a playwright and a literary critic. So what he says, the more perfect the artist, the more completely separate in him will be the man who suffers and the mind which creates. The more perfectly will the mind digest and transmute the passions which are its material. So we can see uh, that Eliot has many problems and many contradictions. He's elitist. He believes in uh, the artist belonging to the elite, being separate from the others, uh, so kind of influence of Nietzsche and, and his idea of uh, the Superman, uh, somebody who is the chosen one. Then uh, he also has uh, xenophobic, racist, anti-Semitic views, and uh, he was nasty in his treating of his wife and showing signs of chauvinism. So all of that is very, very clear. Uh, plus his view of this um, contemporary uh, state of the world uh, probably breeding those views and those views being a reaction uh, to what he felt as a representative of his generation. Uh, so uh, we, we, we can treat Eliot as a really very uh, complex and very contradictory poet.